We're about to hear from officials in Nashville about a school shooting that left at least three children dead. Police say the shooter is also dead. Let's listen. From this spot later uh, in the morning with Chief John Drake and others. At 10.13 this morning, the police department received a call of an active shooter inside Covenant School, Covenant Presbyterian Church. The police department response was swift. Officers entered the first story of the school, began clearing it. They heard shots coming from the second level. They immediately went to the gunfire. When the officers got to the second level, they saw a shooter, a female, who was firing. The officers engaged her. She was fatally shot by responding police officers. There was a five-member team who was on the, that was on the second floor at that time. Two individuals from that five-member team opened fire on the shooter. We know at this point that this shooter is a female. Uh, she appears to be in her teens, although her identification has not been confirmed at this juncture. We know that she was armed with at least two assault-type rifles and a handgun. We are efforting now to identify her. She entered the school through a side entrance and traversed her way from the first floor to the second floor, firing multiple shots. We now know that there are three students who were fatally wounded, as well as three adults inside the school. We are working to identify those victims, including the shooter. A total of seven persons were killed as a result of this morning's incident at the school. By 1027, the shooter was deceased. The officers had engaged the shooter by 1027, and she was deceased. Again, I said the first call came in at 1013 this morning. We'll have more details to give you later in the morning. Chief Drake will be here in a bit. Now Kendra Loney from Nashville Fire. Fire department crews are dispatched for active shooter incidents as well um, for medical support, but also for an RTF response, which is a rescue task force response to go in alongside of uh, MNPD response. Um, our crews were right there on the scene to provide medical aid to any survivors, um, but also be there uh, for victims so that we could try life-saving efforts um, in this case. So we went in as soon as it was safe for our responders to do so to try to provide life-saving efforts for those that were impacted uh, by this incident and this tragedy. Um, our crews were able to be on scene to pull out those that had viable signs of life, um, those that were still showing uh, the option for to be saved. Um, and we did make transport of three uh, individuals and three children and then um, two adults that were taken from the scene. Um, our crews then set up a reunification unit. That reunification unit is at 2100 Woodmont Boulevard. That's where parents can go uh, to be reunited with their children. Uh, all of the remaining students were able to be escorted out of the building with faculty and staff. Um, we're not sure about the processes that they had in place, but we were on scene to help them mitigate anyone from seeing exactly uh, what else was going on but we're sure that they heard the chaos that was surrounding this um, so we do have mental health specialists and professionals that are at that reunification site for both the students and the families that are going to be affected by this today uh, our OEM uh, units were able to provide buses to make transport from the Covenant School to the reunification site we had one bus that carried 74 students students and faculty staff members to the unification reunification site and an additional bus that had 34 students on them. So all of those persons were carried. Um, it was difficult for us to kind of identify who was just there as part of staff for the church versus who was there for uh, the school because it's all housed in one building. Um, but at this time we were able to get that number of persons transported out of the building um, and into that reunification site. So that is where 
parents can go to be reunited with their students. There is a hotline being set up for parents to call, um, but right now that is where they should go, 2100 Woodmont Boulevard, which is Woodmont Baptist Church. Um, additionally, we do have a debriefing site set up for on staff or personnel who are working this incident, um, and there are mental health professionals set up there for them as well. Um, there was one police officer that was injured with a, ha a hand injury um, as a result of making uh, an attack on this uh, incident. But other than that, that have been no additional um, injuries to first responders or personnel responding to this. And as uh, Don mentioned earlier, we will have further updates coming uh, later on in the afternoon. So on a typical day, there would be about 209 students inside the school and approximately 40 to 50 staff members, about 42 staff members. I'll take just a couple of questions uh, before Doctor, we go back. To be clear, so the seven dead, and then nature of injuries, how many injured do you know? That maybe you're being treated still, or injuries? I know the first responders were. An officer had uh, a wound from cut glass. That is the only other injury that I'm aware of. Do we know if the injuries of the students are they critical or to another condition? The three students are deceased. The three students who were shot are deceased. Three staff members who were shot are deceased. Uh, that's a total of six victims. And then you have the shooter who was engaged by two of our police officers, part of a five-member team, and she is deceased for a total of seven individuals. There are no other gunshot victims, non-lethal, that I'm aware of at present. Do you know how many people were shot before the police engaged the shooter? No. Did you know if they shot anyone after they engaged the shooter? Do you know if the shooter was able to shoot anyone else? Did the shooter have any connection to the school that we know of? We do not know who she is at this juncture. We're trying to identify her. Uh, she does appear to be in her teens. Uh, again, with two assault type rifles and at least one pistol. Do we know if there was a lot of surprise this uh, like recent incidents that was back up to the school or the church? No, I'm not. No, this is a church uh, that operates a private school. Uh, th there was no Metro Police personnel assigned to that building at any time. John, do you know if either of the two adults that were shot maybe confronted the gun? You said two? Yeah, the, the adults that were no, shot. No, there, there are a total of three adults. Three adults. Three yeah. adults who have been fatally wounded. Okay, one of them being the shooter? No. No, okay, so three total. So let me, let me go over this again. Okay. You have a total of six victims three students who are deceased, and three adult staff members from the school who are deceased. The shooter herself makes seven. Do you know if one of the three adults maybe confronted her? I do not. There is video from the school that we are viewing now to try to learn exactly how all of this happened. Can you say where the victims were located? Were they in the hallway, in the classroom? I cannot at this juncture, as you know, uh, five of the six were transported. So we will get that information later in the day. Did police engage with the shooter inside a classroom or in the hallway to the other location? Uh, it is an upper level part of the school. It's kind of a lobby type area. It was not in uh, a classroom per se. All right, we'll be back shortly with more detail. We'll uh, tweet out. Uh, give you a 15 minute or so notice before the next one, okay? Thanks. I'm just listening to Nashville police updating us on a school shooting that killed three students. They're now identifying the shooter as a female, they think a teenager. Police say she entered through a side entrance and fired multiple shots. Three children were killed, as were three adults. The shooter is also dead. And for more, I want to bring in former chief of detectives for the NYPD, Robert Boyce, and former FBI agent, ABC News contributor, Brad Garrett, for more on this. Bob, what do you make of this? One taking place at a school full of young children, but also the shooter now identified as an apparent teenage female. Uh, really unusual, what we're seeing right now. Not only was she uh, an apparent teenager, she was heavily armed with two assault rifles and a handgun. Don't know how much ammunition she had with her and how easily she got through that door. So these are some abnormalities in today's world with these with these shootings. But we found out a lot more. We found out the officers ran to the second floor and confronted her at that point. 
and terminated the the attack. Three uh, three staff members as well as three children lost their lives this morning. So uh, diff difficult thing to look at, but I saw right now that uh, there's cameras in the school. We'll know more. It's being reviewed right now. Exactly, um, uh, and, and could, to identify this woman, if she doesn't have anything on her, it's going to take a little while. You know, you got to do fingerprinting process, all kinds of facial recognition to see if you can identify her. So this is not over by a long shot. There's a lot more work to be done here on this case. This this individual, I, I don't know who he was. I don't know if he was the principal or he was a police chief, but did a very good job putting a lot of information out early on to get us to get it to let people know what happened. So, Bob, based on that information, what do you make of the police response here? So I did, did some numbers. They got the call at 10.13 in the morning, um, and they, uh, the condition was corrected under control at uh, 10.27. So you have about 14 minutes from the first call to addressing this female and then ending it. So that was very quick from what I can understand. Again, they have to respond there. They have to entry as tact uh, entry as, enter as tactfully as possible and then c confront. They can hear the shots going up the stairs, confronting that person there all within 14 minutes. Uh, really a professional job from what I can see. Uh, Brad, the FBI and the ATF are now assisting Nashville police on this. Where does this investigation go from here? So the key is to pull together what they know about her and what was the motivation. Uh, and one step before that, is there any other safety concerns in reference to her? In other words, how did she get there? Is there a vehicle par parked outside? Are there any safety issues with it? Uh, wherever she resides, I mean, in the past, some shooters have even booby-trapped <clears throat> their location. You're going to have to check that, <clears throat> excuse me, as you go and search it. So, you know, that's the very first thing. But as you pull together who she is, what there is out there in social media, through friends, through family, as to what's going on with her, is she or was she connected to the school? Did she know that maybe that side door was unlocked? Things like that. I mean, all of that will sort of go together at some point. If she was a student at that school, she's going to know the school. Um, and, and, and so we'll see. But the key is to pull the whole package together and then analyze it to see, could they have gotten in front of her at some point? But obviously, that didn't happen. And I want to bring our Chief Justice Correspondent, Pierre Thomas, as well. Pierre, you've been reporting for some time on gun violence in this country. What do you make of the frequency of mass shootings right now and the unusual nature of having a female shooter in this one? Well, it's highly unusual to have a female shooter. The overwhelming majority of mass shooters tend to be male, um, and they tend to have issues that were underlying that someone noticed beforehand, as Brad pointed out, when they do a detailed background check, once they figure out who this young lady is, they will put together a profile to get a sense of why this took place. But uh, we're seeing mass shootings become a part of the norm of society, unfortunately. So far this year, there have been 128 mass shootings. That's defined as four or more people shot and or killed in a single incident, compared to 112 this time last year. So we're seeing another jump in mass shootings, and again, the key here is how do you prevent these things from coming forward because they're happening with such frequency.